Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to find out about new videos when we post them on Tuesdays and Saturdays. And as we kick off this new section of the course, it's time to dig deeper into what adjustment entries are and how they work. So, basically, here's what we're going to spend this entire section of the course doing in relation to the accounting cycle. First, let's make sure we're talking about the same thing. Sometimes if you accidentally put something incorrect in your financial records, you have to correct it. When that happens, some people refer to it as an adjustment. That's because you have to adjust your books to make the correction. Let's be clear. That's not what we're talking about when we talk about adjustment entries. As I mentioned previously, adjustment entries are when we record financial activity in the books to account for changes in financial matters that are not directly related to a specific action that has occurred. And as I explained in that previous lesson, there are several different reasons why this could happen but the majority of them fall into a few specific categories, and we'll start breaking those down in just a minute. Also, as I mentioned earlier, different businesses handle the frequency of adjustments differently. Some only make the adjustments at the end of the fiscal year. Others make all of them, either monthly or quarterly, and others make some monthly or quarterly, and the rest at the end of the year. I can't tell you what will be correct for companies you work with, but just understand that there are different options. So to kick us off and follow up on what I mentioned previously, there are four basic types of adjustment entries we're going to examine in this course. First, we're going to look at adjusting for prepaid assets that have been consumed. Then we're going to work with adjustments that need to be made for inventory. After that, we'll spend some time covering recording adjustments to account for depreciation. In those lessons, we'll dig into exactly what depreciation is and why we record it on the books. Then the fourth reason covers adjusting for accrued liabilities, and more specifically, accounting for unpaid payroll at the end of a period. There may be other reasons than the four specific ones we're going to cover in this course, but let's start with these. Hopefully, covering these four main ones first will help get your brain power flowing on other ones you specifically may need. After we cover the four main reasons, we'll spend a little time looking at how we work with our worksheet tool. Finally, we have to actually get the adjustments onto our financial records, so we'll wrap up talking about that. With that in mind, let's jump into the first one, prepaid assets, in the next lesson. Thanks for checking out this lesson. We have lots more information and other videos on our channel. Check them out or hit subscribe to find out more.